Okay, so here we are on an engine assembly. Uh, this engine is using an aftermarket crank and anytime you're dealing with brand new components, aftermarket in particular, you really need to make sure everything is good on the crank before you do any machine work, any balance work, anything else. If you don't do that, and you need to do work on one of these things, then you're going to find that the crank manufacturer is not going to be real likely to help you out. So, the well, first thing I want to do here is I want to check the crank end plate. And that will give me an idea as to whether or not the width on the uh, <clears throat> uh, crank thrust surfaces is close to being correct. So what I've done here already is set this dial indicator up so that it's pretty close to running square with the end of the crank snout. And the crank has been installed in the block, all the main caps are torqued down. I've got the dial indicator pretty close to zero. What I'm going to do here is just lightly push the crank forward and then I'm going to set my indicator to zero. We're very close to it. You don't really have to zero your indicator, but it doesn't hurt anything. All right, now I'm going to lightly move the crank backwards. Keep in mind, this isn't a pry bar or a chisel. So I'm going to use this as a pry bar, push the crank to the rear, and take a look at the movement on the gauge. Now I'm going to move the crank back forward and make sure that it's still at zero and it's very close. There we go. Now we're zeroed up. Backwards and now forward. This indicator is a one thousandth increment indicator. So the reason I'm get, reading I'm getting is in thousandths. And it looks to me like I've got about two thousandths of crank end plate. That's not enough. I definitely want to see at least four, and five is definitely preferred. So I'm going to spin the crank 180 degrees and see if that makes any difference at all to the reading on the scale. So again we're going to push the crank to the rear and now forward. When you're moving this crank you don't have to give it a lot of force. Just a little bit of pressure to move the crank is all you need. Okay so at 180 degrees I'm showing about the same thing. You wouldn't normally expect to see a change there, but you want to check it anyway. So that's the crank end plate. Now there's a couple ways that I can address this. We can either have the crank thrust surface itself widen slightly, which is expensive and a pain in the butt, or we can take the crank thrust bearings and remove some metal from the bearing surface. That a lot of times is the easier approach. However, uh, it's time consuming and you need to be real careful to make sure that you're taking even amounts of metal off. Again, I prefer to see about five thousandths of an inch, so this one's got about three thousandths of an inch to go. All these things you check on these cranks, make sure they're right before you do any balance work on them.